looks like it will let me record. So recording has started. Uh, actually, I guess I should have, before I did that, I should have asked, does anybody have any issue with me recording it? Uh, speak now and I can stop it, but it, I think hopefully everybody's cool. Um, all right, so maybe what we should do is uh, while we're getting warmed up, maybe just go around and everybody, everybody um, you know, say who they are, uh, maybe how long you've been using Drupal and, um, you know, any particular sort of, you know, uh, passion or, or reason for uh, being enthusiastic about this topic. So um, my name is Martin Anderson Klitz. I work at Northern, which is formerly Digital Echidna, and um, been using Drupal for a while. And, and in fact, I realized a while ago that uh, sometimes on sites, I probably spend more time on the admin UX in terms of trying to make that sort of easy and intuitive uh, than I even do on the client side, because I think it, it, it can be much more complicated, but it can also be made to be very easy and intuitive, but it's really, um, at least it used to be much harder. I feel like as Drupal has matured, some of those things have gotten easier, but but still require, I think the, um, I don't know, attention to detail or, or the, the desire to invest the time to, to sort of, um, you know, make those kinds of changes. So uh, that's way longer than it should have been. So let me pass it off to uh, Benji. Hi, Benji Fisher. I've been using Drupal a little more than 10 years. Um, I'm uh, a member of the usability team. So we meet on, on Zoom once a week. So we, we talk about things like this and um, how to make the admin experience better. Um, it, it is something that so often is neglected in, in the projects I work on for work. And it, it could be so much better. <laughs> So I, I'm always looking for ideas. I, I, I remember a few years ago at, at a conference, I saw a presentation on some work being done for the mass.gov site by Last Call Media, I think. And I think they did a really nice job of, uh, of improving things for the, the, the many content editors who are going to be spending hours and hours on the back end of the site. Um, cool. So maybe we should just go down the list here. Ralph, do you want to go next? Hi, I'm Ralph. Uh, I am using Drupal for four or five years now. Um, still learning and finding my way. And yeah, I'm interested in the whole usability topic. And I've also, over the years, added points to a list. So I've already copied a uh an excerpt of those for today great um just on the topic of sharing okay i did uh, put the link in there but i'll put it again because i see we've got a couple more people join so I'll try and remember to post that uh, a few times through the session because i think as you join you don't see the past um chat you only see the things that uh appear after you join so if i forget by all means if anybody else wants to pick up the slack and uh, do that, that would be great. So uh, why don't we go to Brian next? Hey, I'm Brian. <clears throat> I've been working with Drupal for eight or nine years now. And, um, I feel like the admin area and the admin experience is kind of always, always ends up on the lower end of the list of priorities. So I'm just really interested to kind of see what everyone's doing to make that better for the content editors. All right, and Manap? Uh, hey, hey guys. So I'm using Drupal from uh, on the last year to nine years. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, I will not say I like admin panel. I would say I like to say I like each and every part of Drupal. Okay, so most of if if I mean most of the time I worked in the development part. Client need some front end and back end things, and so whatever they need, I do, and I like each and every part of it. Cool. All 
right. So in terms of a format, um, overall, I want to keep it conversational, but um, I guess going into today, I didn't really know that this was going to be more of a BA format. So I had actually prepared a few slides. Uh, let's maybe think of these as discussion points. So um, maybe this is a list of, of ideas that we can add to. Um, maybe also talk about for some of these ideas where like some concrete examples of like either modules that we could use or like ways that we can configure Drupal to, um, to better embrace these if we think they're even worthwhile. So uh, in that spirit, maybe I will start sharing my screen here. And just kick this off. So first off, shout out to the Drupal Marketing Initiative. I kind of stole their template for the slide deck. <clears throat> So here to talk about the Drupal admin experience and ways that we can make Drupal easy for the people who use it most. I feel like, you know, if you've got very loyal visitors to your website, they might come, you know, two or three times a week. Uh, whereas an administrator might use, use it that, that many times a day or more, right? So they're spending a lot more time than, than even your most avid users. Um, so it only makes sense to make sure that uh, it's going to be really easy to use for them. I feel like Drupal has a reputation of being harder to learn. You hear people talk about the, the steep learning curve. And um, I mean, I feel like part of that is that that Drupal is built to tackle more ambitious um, kinds of projects and, and, you know, applications. And so, you know, there's naturally a bit of a trade off, but there are definitely ways that, that we can, you know, as site builders and developers um, sort of craft Drupal to be easier to use for the administrators. And, and hopefully we can share some ideas and, and you know, uh, see what we all can do to, to make Drupal better in that regard. So um, as I say, these are, are some ideas that I have, um, just sort of principles in terms of ways that, that we can make um, Drupal easier to use. So the first one being appropriate complexity. Um, I've seen a number of sites that uh, we've started dealing with a customer, had a site built for them by somebody else and really only had like one user role that could do everything. And so from a user standpoint, that can be incredibly overwhelming, right? It's like, you know, drinking from a fire hose um, to all of a sudden have all of these menus with all of these like configuration options, they can make any kind of content. They, you know, some of them might have, you know, 30 or 40 different fields to fill out. Um, all of these things, and you can see why being sort of, you know, dropped into the deep end that way, that people can get overwhelmed, whereas um, you can have different roles for different users of, um, you know, based on their, their level of sort of, you know, technical expertise, and you can have uh, something that, you know, if you want to follow that, that pool analogy is almost like the kiddie pool, right? So, like, you can make a basic page, you can use simple HTML as the text format, uh, what you're seeing is probably going to be, you know, similar to like, you know, the, the WordPress experience where you can like make a page, you can dump content in and not do a whole lot else, right? But for people getting used to, to uh, working with, with that kind of an on online content management system, maybe that's a great way to, to let them sort of, you know, dip their toe in the water, get comfortable, and then gradually, you know, maybe you move them up a level in their role, or maybe you adjust those roles over time as the, the people using them uh, get more and more co uh, confident in, um, you know, kind of the permissions and the access that they have. So um, as I say here, I think there's a balance between like the, the power that people need, um, but also, um, you know, the idea of having like things kept really simple. And the, the other thing too, is I feel like when we're building sites sometimes, like I know I've built things for, let's say lay, layout builder, where I'll define this custom block type that's uh, really configurable. So you can say like, you know, I, I'm gonna use this drop down to say whether, you know, the, the, um, the text is on the left or the right. And, you know, you can like do all these cool things so that this like one block type can like be configured in like 18 different ways. And to me, it's super cool and it's really powerful. Um, but then to try and train um, somebody who's not technically sophisticated to use that thing is like, they just get lost within, within 10 minutes of like trying to really understand like how this one thing um, can end up, you know, um, being rendered out in all those different ways. And so 
depending on who the audience is that you're building for, you, it may be better for them to actually build those out as separate block types of like, you know, image on the left or image on the right. And then they, they, that way, when they go in to, you know, build something, it's like really obvious of like, yes, that's the thing that I need as opposed to like, I have to get this thing and then configure it and, you know, whatever else. Um, and so, Part of the challenge is that that there's no one right answer. It's always about like who the audience is of who you're building for, and and you know, I think that also will change over time. You know, as I mentioned before, if if somebody starts off, they may be easy, easily intimid intimidated, but over time, as they get to to use Drupal more and more, they may be more confident and willing to to take on additional levels of complexity. So, uh, part of that is really about understanding who you're building for. Um, the other thing is, I feel like it's really easy to end up building out things that are, are super complicated because we're designing for like all of the edge cases, right? Of like, you know, most page nodes only need like a title and a body field. Um, but we know that like two out of 3000 need, you know, PDF attachments and like five of them are going to need to be associated with a, you know, like a contact, which is a separate content type and all these other things, right? And it's, it's okay to say we need to have those, but I feel like it's also possible to um, to sort of minimize the day-to-day -day impact of, of those edge cases being available. So you could like have um, almost like two tabs where one is like the, the typical use case of like, sure, I'm gonna make this page and I'm gonna put it in the title and body, but then I'm gonna have a separate tab, which is where I put all of those things that people are only gonna need like once a year or whatever, right? And so, the day-to-day -day experience is that you've kept it nice and simple, um, but then they also kind of know like where they can go to, to find all of those extra things that they're very rarely going to need. Uh, same thing with the WYSIWYG. It's very easy to like take all of the cool different things that you can make the WYSIWYG do and then have this like giant like, you know, ugly word thing that has like 300 different buttons and then they can never parse out like which button does what. Um, Whereas I feel like there's a lot of value in keeping uh, at least the default experience really simple. And so when people go there, they're like, yeah, I'm going to drop in some content. Maybe I'll like bold and link some stuff. And most of the time, that's probably all they need to do. And then you can have a different text format that gives them the extra complexity, you know, if they have a particular piece of content that needs, you know, tables or footnotes or, you know, whatever the, you know, extra complexity is, again, you can if that's really more the edge case, you can make it, uh, you can keep the defaults um, simpler so that on the day-to-day -day basis, it's easy to use and then they can tap into that extra complexity uh, when and if they need it. Um, consistency, I know I've seen this in projects that uh, my company has worked on where um, they built out all of the fields, they've styled it to look great. And then uh, you go into to edit a node and it's like weird because there's kind of a logical flow of things on the view side, um, but nobody has given any attention to the flow of things on the admin side. And so it's this like, you know, alphabetical thing or whatever. Um, there's no correspondence between the structure of the form on the view side and on the edit side. And so I feel like if we can make an, an effort to at least have some level of consistency between those two things, um, it's easier for people um, I think to parse when they go into the edit side, if there's again that consistency of like, oh, okay, well the body is the first thing that appears on the the um, the view side, so it makes sense that it's uh, first thing on the admin side as opposed to like, you know, ten fields down, you know, underneath a bunch of different like, um, you know, taxonomy uh, widgets or what have you. And even in terms of how things are named. It's very easy to uh, to let there be sort of kind of a separation between some of those things, um, but the more you can keep that consistent, I feel like that again for users is going to make it much more intuitive because they don't have to sort of like mentally make that adjustment or that translation of like okay, so this field that I see on the back end actually is this thing that appears on the front end. If you make those two things really tightly coupled, uh, especially around the language, then I think that's going to make things uh, easier for your editors. Um, one thing I've been trying to do more and more is um, the idea of keeping people in context. So um, we as like seasoned Drupal users know that um, 
at any point, you know, if you, uh, particularly if you've got sort of your admin toolbar installed, you can just go up to the content menu and then go over and create whatever content it is the, that you need. Um, but especially for people who are new to Drupal, it shouldn't really be necessary to like force them to memorize that convention, right? So if you're looking at um, a page of news articles, you could have a button at the top of that page of news articles that only appears to people who have the permission to add news articles. That's just a big prompt that says like, you know, add news and they click that and they get right to the article, um, you know, create a, an article node uh, form, right? And so by doing those kinds of things, when they're within a system, uh, we can keep them there and there's no, like they're not having to do that, that sort of, you know, again, like the, the mental work of, of trying to remember Oh yeah, I have to go to this other place to be able to add content to this thing, right? If you if you make those prompts really obvious and in the context of where uh, people go to consume that, then from an editor standpoint, um, it's really going to be super self-evident. Um, and I can show some examples of these later on, but I figured um, maybe it's worth just going through these as a start. Um, in terms of of page loads, um, there are lots of ways that Drupal can. Um, make the page loads much more useful. So I know oftentimes in the sites that we build, once you log in, if it just takes you to your user page, there's really nothing on there that's going to be of any value. So there are, um, there's a module, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Um, it's sort of like login toboggan, but like the D8 version of that, if you're familiar with um, what that was from D7, but it basically will redirect you on login and you can set that by role. So when an editor logs in, why not take them directly to that content list interface as a really simple example, right? As opposed to having them see this page that just has their username on top and then they have to remember to go to the content interface. So I feel like there are really simple ways like that where we can say, um, let's not take them someplace useless and then force them to remember that they need to, to go somewhere else. Um, and Drupal has this destination parameter. So as like a site builder or a module author, um, you can leverage that to say, after they've done the thing that I want them to do, where is a useful place that we can, can have them end up, right? And so uh, just giving uh, thoughts to some of those little details, I think can make a big difference in terms of uh, how Drupal feels in terms of it being intuitive to use. Um, for anybody familiar with Jacob Nielsen, um, there's this UX law called Jacob's Law. And the idea being that most people are spending most of their time on other websites. And so when they come to your website, they're expecting your website to follow a lot of those same conventions. And so it's, it's not a bad idea to try and think of innovative ways to do things, um, but understand that, you know, people have these mental models and if you can can leverage those and at least build on top of them, then you're going to make your site much more intuitive for people. So um, if, you know, almost every site on, um, you know, if people, I think this, this maybe ties a bit into some of the, the talks that were done yesterday around like what can Drupal learn from other CMSs, but I, I feel like this sort of ties into that idea of like if there are best of breed ways of managing content, then let's let's try and follow some of those models. And um, one uh, that I've been kind of passionate about the last couple of years is specific to uh, date modules and really trying to have a date widget within Drupal that works a lot more like um, the way calendar applications would. So if people are used to using um, Google Calendar or um, you know Apple Calendar and those work a particular way, um, why would we use something in Drupal that is like, you know, puts a lot more onus on the, the editor to like, you know, manually populate like, I forget, it's like 14 different fields before they can enter a simple date range, right? So if we can have things that, that better align with, uh, again, some of those conventions that, that people are used to in the software they use every day, again, that's gonna help to make Drupal much more intuitive. Um, and I think, again, this one was touched on a bit uh, yesterday, but like from a language standpoint, um, if we can avoid using Drupalisms like nodes, entity, um, media, and make them more sort of um, tangible and specific, you know, talking about the, the specific content types, alerts, events, images, and so on, um, it's going to make it a lot more, more obvious to people. I really, one of the things I really like about the, um, uh, what is it? 
inline entity form is that it gives you the option to, to actually put labels in there for those things. So as opposed to saying like add another media item, you can say add another me image because it's an image, you know, reference field that, that you built there or whatever. So I think by, again, making those things uh, much more specific, it makes it more concrete for people and it's easier for them to parse. Um, you know, there's the, the classic usability book, Don't Make Me Think. Um, again, this is just a super high level principle, but, but um, try and make things as blindingly obvious as possible uh, in terms of how people are going to uh, administer the website. And, uh, and again, I can, I can show a couple of examples of um, ways that um, to me make, make sites easier to use, but um, definitely interested to hear what other people are doing um, in terms of how they build websites and some of the solutions that they like. Um, and then the last one is really as much as you can, gather feedback, understand ways that um, you can make your sites easier to use. And, and even sometimes as I say in very small ways, add up over time and really improve that user experience. Um, but getting that feedback from the people who are actually using it and potentially struggling, uh, I think is one of the keys because it's too easy as developers to say, I understand how this works. And so to me, it's no problem to like go through this seven, seven step workflow, but it may be completely bewildering to some of your editors. Um, so getting that feedback from the people who are actually doing the work and using it, I think is really critical. So that's kind of my list, but definitely before I do anything else, would love to open this up and see if anybody else has, you know, like any other kinds of like uh, principles that they like to follow as far as um, what things they try to bake into their admin interface to make them easy. Anyone have any thoughts? Um, I pasted a few notes into the um, the pad that you set up, and there, there's a link in the chat. Um, so a few of the things you said at the start about having um, customized navigation um, for the people who will be using the site all the time. There are a few core issues um, designed at doing the same sort of thing. Um, so maybe in Drupal 10, we'll finally have a content editor role and a content manager role in the standard profile. Um, and I also pasted a link to the session I mentioned, which talked about um, a really nice job of, I think, of customizing the, the admin UI for the mass.gov site. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for doing that. Any other thoughts? Um, all right, so I'm going to just show a couple of things that I like to do uh, as I build sites. And again, would be awesome to hear from other people in terms of um, what they like to do. So one of the things that I've been trying to do, again, this is the idea of, of allowing people to manage a site in context. And uh, particularly because we've got the contextual menus in Drupal 8, there's some cool things you can do in terms of, um, you know, so as an example, this site is built so that um, you can do the configuration for this uh, header block uh, without even having to leave the home page. So you could go in here and swap out. Uh, <laughs> live demos are always fun. Um, you can do that. Um, similarly, we've got our quick links here. You could add a new one or uh, even do stuff like um, reorder them. So let's put the road work first. Tax notices last. Let me save that. You can see um, again without having to leave the context of the home page, you can make all of those changes. And I personally, I think the settings tray is pretty cool. Um, I like it a lot for for that ability to let people, you know, do updates to the site um, without losing the context of where they were. Um, I'd be interested to know how other people feel about that. I, I know Drupal. I think it was. Was it Drupal 6 where one of the big new features was that overlay um, for admin? And then, you know, a lot of developers, that was like the first thing they would do after they installed Drupal was to, to disable it, right? So I don't know if, if the settings tray is like the new overlay, but um, as I say, to me, this is, is really powerful in terms of giving people the ability to, um, to have these like really obvious prompts um, directly within the context of like, you know, when you come to the homepage, 
you don't have to remember, oh, if I go up to configuration and then down to system and then over to here, there's this, you know, like uh, form that I can get to that lets me configure that and then go back to the home page and see if my changes are the way that I want them, right? If you make those um, right where the content is that they want to manage, then, then it's really like, I think, self-evident and more intuitive. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of modules that allow you to do this, this piece of like, um, put the, the ad content. Um, so this is actually in the view. Um, it's like a view header um, item. And this is another one. So the, the one interesting thing in Drupal core is you can link between views, but for some reason, it seems like it doesn't do a permissions check. So if I use the, um, the core link between displays to add, so this is uh, actually, let me just go here. So this is actually a sorting display for this view. And if I just use the core link for that, it would display for everybody, even though um, it depends on uh, a spe specific permission to, to be able to do that. And so I ended up making a separate module because I really, as I say, I like this idea of having the links right there for editors, but only editors. So if we go in and look at this same page, copy. So as an anonymous user, you can see like those, those buttons don't display. Um, they're really only, only show for the people who have access to, um, who have access or the permissions required to, to perform those tasks, right? Is that a module available to everyone or something you did just specifically for this site? Um, so it's, I'm trying to remember, it's a module that I made, but it is a contrib module. So this one is called Add Content by Bundle. Uh, let's see here. So uh, this is the one where you can um, basically add as many of these buttons as you want. So if you had a, a view that had three different content types, you could have you know three separate buttons. You can add classes on them. Um, they're technically just links, but you can uh, obviously use your like button classes to, to make them look like buttons. And then it has configuration options to say, do you want it to just um, take them to the... Um, take them to the regular node form. Do you want it to open in like a settings tray or do you want it to open in an overlay? And then if you use one of either the settings tray or the overlay, then you can actually set a parameter for like how many pixels wide you want that to be. Um, and I think by default, it also sets the um, destination parameter so that if you use that link to go off and add, let's say a new article, um, then once you save that, it'll take you back and you'll be able to see your new article in the view as an example. Um, and the other one is, Too late in the day on a Friday for my brain to still be working, unfortunately. <clears throat> it's display link, display link plus, because the plus is the permissions check, <clears throat> but also it does add these uh, configuration pieces. So you can basically say which display you want um, to link to, um, the, the text that you want in the link, and then again, you can say, the target, if it should be um, just the regular form, if it should be, you know, in this case, a little dialogue where you can use the settings tray and then set, uh, oh, <laughs> that's interesting one. I think if you set modal dialogue, it should um, open up a separate, separate field where you can configure that, but you can use the class again to give it, um, you know, make it look like a button or, or whatever you need to do that way. Um, the other one, actually, uh, before I forget, I believe the add content by bundle 
also has integration with the form mode plugin, which uh, I think is kind of cool because I think I'm pretty sure Drupal core still doesn't have a UI for you can create view modes for forms, um, but there's no built in um, way to say in this context, use that form versus this other one. So um, is it form mode control. Maybe it's form mode manager. Anyway, um, the idea being that, so again, if in the context of let's say creating an event in the sidebar, you wanted to have a simplified version of that form, um, you could uh, create that extra form view mode um, with fewer fields exposed, and then say only when it's opened up in that sidebar, use that, um, that simplified version of the form. Um, Thanks, that's helpful. That's glad to hear that. Um, anybody else have like certain things that they like to do when they build websites that they've found um, has made it easier for their editors? One of the things I've done is when people need to add an image, I'll put in um, a note in the directions that say the ideal dimensions for this image are X by X. Uh, and that if it's if it's larger than that, or uh, it will be cropped so that people know ahead of time what's going to happen. Yeah, that's a great one. Um sort of a tangent on that idea is uh, sometimes if let's say um, I've got an image style that's going to crop, let's say, a hero image to a specific uh, proportion. I'll make a thumbnail image style that's that's the same proportion but a smaller size, and then you can set your, um, you know, whatever like media widget to to use that smaller thumbnail so that people get a preview of how that's going to look cropped, basically instead of like showing them just a square one or the same thing like you know, not cropping, and then they have to like save the node and then see it and go, oh no, that looks terrible. And they have to like, you know, adjust the cropping using, you know, let's say you're using focal point or something like that. So giving them that feedback right away means that they can adjust it without having to like save it and see the full node. Sounds good. Anybody else? It is late in the day in the last session slot of the day. Definitely appreciate everybody who's come out. Um, as a reminder for anybody who's come in recently and not seen the link, we do have a uh, Drutopia pad started for this session that includes the slides we covered earlier. But trying to get to the chat. Mm. Maybe I have to show it, stop sharing my screen. Oh, I've already pasted it, no. Ah, okay, thanks for that, Rolf. Um, so yeah, the, the link to the slides is there. <clears throat> There's already been a couple of suggestions in there. Um, by all means, feel free to add other suggestions that you might have. Um, yeah, we'll treat it as a collaborative document and uh, hopefully we can use it as a place to uh, collect some good ideas. You mean ideas for contract modules? It could be ideas for new modules. It could be just ideas of like, you know, um, the way I think it was Mary just said uh, in terms of like, 
you know, this is help text that I always put in and that helps people to know, you know, like okay. um, those kinds of things. So it doesn't necessarily have to be something really fancy, but, but sometimes, yeah, even something as simple as help text um, can really be useful to people in terms of uh, making it really obvious um, how something is going to react. And it's not like then they, they create a note and then save it. And they're like, why does it look all messed up? Right. Like if, if you give them, um, the ability to anticipate how it's going to behave sometimes, you know, even that in and itself can be a big improvement. Yeah, because the points I've written down and noted were more in regards of which um, functionality or user experience uh, in the context of the um, Drupal admin could be improved or were uh, some flaws in my humble opinion. and. Uh, that wasn't that uh, fitting uh, to uh, name those right now, I guess, because uh, I guess I misread the topic of the session. So it was okay and interesting, definitely. Right. I mean, does anybody have any things that in their own personal use of Drupal that they find is like, why does it, why does Drupal have to do that thing every time? I have a few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, I've just adapted to what's been there in Drupal. But does any has anybody used a different admin theme other than the default ones that's better in this regard? Because it sounds like Martin, what your a lot of your ideas I think are excellent, um, but it seems to me that they would they would need an entirely built from the ground up restructured admin theme. And so that you can incorporate, you know, roles and permissions. I mean, all I've ever done was to control permissions for different user roles. Um, but that doesn't change the interface really that much. It just doesn't let people do certain things, you know. Um, well, so actually, let me see if I can open up the same site as a different user role. Uh, let's go. All right. So um, this site is using the Jin admin theme, which is sort of built on top of Claro, but meant to be, I don't know, I want to say a little fancier. Um, Sasha Eggenberger, who is one of the uh, designers who worked on the Claro theme, also built Jin as a way to. I don't know, I, I feel like to some degree, um, try and build out some ideas that he had for what he hopes Clara will eventually be. Um, so I think that the module is still in like a beta phase, um, but we use it a lot and we really no. like it. And it has this awesome. Jin login, um, which gives you like a, a much nicer login form. And then you'll see once we log in, I've used that other module that I talked about where basically as soon as you log in, it takes you directly to the um, to your uh, content dashboard effectively, right? Which is much more useful than just saying a blank page with your username. Um, um, yeah. So you can see we built this site so that as an author, it's really super simple. You can only add like one of these four content types. And then when you go in, it's all just super simple. Um, I really like the, this Jin admin theme. Uh, I like the fact that the save button is like always visible on screen. So as a user, you're not having to like fill out two fields and then scroll all the way to the bottom. Um, I like that idea that always being obvious. Um, but then we can contrast that if we go back to what we were looking at before, you know, the level of complexity that, that's exposed to like a full administrator is obviously like a couple of orders of magnitude higher in complexity, right? So like all of these different options. Um, and I think if we can have the appropriate level of complexity that, that we expose to you know, uh, users, then um, I think we have the opportunity to, to make it much less intimidating, right? So as somebody's getting used to the site for the first time, maybe they only get that, that authoring experience until, until they get that experience. And then you either um, add permissions to that role or you say, okay, now we're going to move you up to, I don't know, an editor role where now you can start to use workflows and some other things, right? Um, so um, I feel like 
yeah, even without necessarily like having um, a fancier admin theme or some of those other things, like just how we configure the site, there's a lot of things that we can do. But one addition, sure. could you go could you go back to the author window, yep. please? Um, and one step back to the um, yeah to the add content, for example. If you go there, that's one one problem in my humble opinion for people new to Drupal. It's some sort of cognitive load. It's basically most of the time reading and it's sort of abstract. So if you take a look, most of the admin theme, you have loads of text and labels to read. It's, it's important for sure, but it's an overload and there are mostly no visual cues and no affordance in most parts uh, how to orient. And that's difficult. And for example, based on in part um, on the talk yesterday um, about the Drupal admin experience, where it, uh, I blank right now on her name. Um, Susanna, I think. Susanna, yeah, right, sorry. Um, the idea of when entering the content, you um, provide a split view. On the left, you get the form with all the fields, and on the right, you have um, a field for the preview of the content which is entered. And you could extend it to the, uh, for example, if you provide a select box with all the available uh, view modes for the particular content type, uh, though you can switch off, uh, switch between. So you can see, for example, for the um, view mode X, you get that view that you get, a, that the user gets a visual represent, uh, the, the author visual representation, how the content he's entering or she's entering is used on the site. So it's, so it wouldn't be even necessary to edit it uh, on the front end, like you uh, showed before. And once additional idea is when, um, Instead of providing simple text in, con uh, in the context of add content, you could also do little previews. So you get a preview of the page that the, uh, the, the, the author sees, ah, okay, that is for example, um, page, or that is for example, um, a team member, or that is page or whatever. So that people get some kind of visual cues also. Not, um, it's, it's okay for people using a screen reader, to have much text and it's all accessible, that's necessary and good, but also for the um, people relying on visual cues, there should be also some sort of um, opportunity, let's put it that way. Sure. I mean, uh, talking about that whole experience of like this button taking you to a place where then you have to you know, choose a content type, Theoretically, if this could be a drop button instead of just a uh, you know a regular link button, I feel like from a usability standpoint that would be a big improvement, right? So that you could like click the thing to open it and then click a content type and be right there, as opposed to again having to like click this, get to another place, and then um, at that point it's, it's another it. click. So you should always should. Basically, what you need would be some sort of top task for each role. And those tasks, the top tasks should be uh, reachable in at, le um, at a maximum of one or two clicks. Mm -hmm. uh, or the, the main top task even directly with maximum one click. For sure. <clears throat> All right, we're getting low on time here and I know that the big raffle starts at quarter two. Oh, it's basically now. So I guess we should wrap things up. Um, Maybe we should uh, drop the Drutopia pad link in one last time. And let me just go here. Oh, already oh, <laughs> beat <me> to it. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for that. And thanks everybody for coming. And I um, hope you've had a, a fun day at MidCamp. I've definitely enjoyed it. So uh, I guess we'll see you all in the, uh, this is the main ballroom for the raffle, so. Thank you. Yeah, thanks again, Martin.
Merci. Good.